Okay, hello everybody. Um, so I promised you from the first portfolio tutorial video that I would share a second video where I give you a practical example of how you can um, complete the portfolio. I just want to say at this point that please don't think that this is the template for how you should do it. There are so many ways that you can be creative with this and um, I'm sure that you guys as students will come up with wonderful ways to reflect your experiences. This is just an example for those of you that wish to do it on computer number one and using Microsoft Word. I will also try and show you how you could use PowerPoint because a lot of students have asked, can they do it on PowerPoint? So I'll try and take you through that as well. But please just consider this as an example. You might already have an idea in your head about how you want to do it. I would say go with that idea because it will probably much be much more creative. Okay, so I'm going to open up um, a Microsoft Word document. Sorry, I just remember I had started something, but I want to start on a clean page. So when you open up Word, the, um, the default is usually, the default blank document is usually A4, and it's in portrait in terms of the shape or the layout. So we want to just change this to a poster. So I'm going to click here where it says layout, and change my orientation to landscape. And do you see how it just changed the shape? And then I'm going to change my size from A4 to A3. And then do you see how it just made my page bigger? So that will just give you a lot more space to work on uh, when you're collecting all of your, your images and all your words for your poster. Okay, so now you've got this blank document and you are like, where do I start? So you go back to your instructions. Remember, we went through this yesterday. Um, I shared a video with you yesterday. Please have a look at that one if you haven't um, yet done so. And from my uh, instructions, remember we gave you some questions that you can use to start thinking about what can I reflect on my poster. Remember, you don't have to use these questions. A lot of students have asked me if they can come up with their own. Of course you can. As long as it's going to reflect a variety of experiences that you've had at TUT, and if possible, try to also relate them to the skills that we've been teaching you in this subject, um, as well as some of the topics that we've facilitated. Okay, so I'm just going to jump to, and remember, you don't have to do this in a specific order. It's not like this is question one and you must answer it first. No, you can jump and answer the questions in whichever way you want. I'm going to jump to this one that says, what activities are important to me and how do I like to spend my time? So you go back now to your page, or even if you're just first sitting with your diary or a notebook, and just reflect for a few minutes on what have you been doing this year as a student? What have you enjoyed doing? What are the new things maybe that you've tried? Um, so let's say you decided to challenge yourself and uh, do a sport. Uh, maybe you learned, um, you wanted to be part of the soccer team. So you learned to play soccer with your friends on a weekend. That's a lovely activity and it might be a freeing activity for you. It helps you to de-stress. It helps you to feel good and to be with other people. So you can go, um, you can do two things. You can find those images that you have. Let's say you've taken pictures on your phone of your friends playing a match over the weekend. You can take those pictures and share them. We do want to see as much of you reflected in the post as possible. But I do also understand that some students maybe wouldn't feel comfortable sharing their personal images. That's also perfectly fine. So if you are going to, let's say, use Google, you can Google images. So we can open up a tab. Um, I did share with you that there's a nice website that you can use for free pictures. It's called pixabay.com. Um, and so you can search here for free images and you can use those. It, it, in a sense, it, it doesn't really mean that you can't reference them. It just means that they don't have copyright. Um, but we still want to encourage you to reference, and I'll also show you that. Okay, so let's say you decide you want to Google a picture, soccer with friends. I tried to be specific just so that I can get a nice image, but you can use whatever keywords you like. Now, I don't know, <laughs> this one really appealed to me. And remember, to some extent, this poster will also be metaphorical, which means that you don't have to be specific or be exact with what you're reflecting. Sometimes you want to use metaphors to describe your experiences. As long as you're able to explain all of that, um, 
that's perfectly fine. So you can find the, the other thing about Pixabay is it doesn't have a lot of variety or a lot of different images as you would maybe find on Google, but um, you are safe using Pixabay because you know that those images are free. Okay. Uh, I am going to take this one. I know you're not kids, but I think the metaphor here is maybe let's say you've never played soccer before. So learning to play soccer is a new experience for you and it's felt like you are um, a child again learning a new skill. So that for me is why I thought this picture uh, would be interesting. Now there are steps to Pixabay. You have to download and, and all of that. So you can go through that. Um, in fact, when you click on download, it will also give you the um, the reference that you can use for that image. So do you see here where it says, this image is by Love My Bri <laughs> from Pixabay. Um, you can copy that link as well. I want to copy the actual words. And then on your Word document, your second page, remember we've said your second page can definitely be your reference page. So you can only submit two pages and the second one must be the references. Now to create my second page and to make it, um, I want it, I don't want my second page to be A3 and landscape. I want it to be a normal A4 um, portrait page. Okay, so what I do is I go to breaks. From breaks, I click on next page. Now I don't want it to be A3, so I change it to A4 and I change it from port uh, landscape to portrait. Okay, so you can do that so that it, it, it's nice and professional. I'm just going to zoom in then on that second page and then I'm going to call it reference list. And then number one was the image by I Love My Bri Pixabay. I'm just going to quickly put the address and I encourage you to try and save your references the moment you are on that website because it's sometimes very difficult when you've collected all your nice pictures and then to have to now go back and find the references it's hard um, even though we're not this is not ready yet we, we can't submit a reference like this remember we must still clean it up and present it according to either your harvard um, or your APA format but at least we have the information here so when we need to start cleaning it up we we, we, we have it all in one place. Okay, so that's my image that I'm taking. So I want to now copy that image. It would have downloaded on your computer. I'm just going to right click. And then on my poster page, let me zoom out. I'm going to say Control V. Okay, and then to make my picture either bigger or smaller, I just have to click on these. Um, you see that okay uh, you can also crop it so for me cropping just means you reduce the size of it I don't really want to see so much of that grassy area um, Okay, so now it's a little bit smaller and then you can decide in terms of the size how you want it to be I'm gonna make it like that I mean, I think my lecturer can still be able to see that that's people playing soccer. Okay, but this is just an example. Use what you can find probably even better pictures. Now, I cannot just put this on my poster because what's my lecturer going to think? She's not going to understand. There's no context to this image. It's kids playing soccer. She's going to think, oh, maybe I'm a coach of a soccer team or maybe this is one of my kids. So you need to give it some context. So I would create a text box now. So you go to insert say text box and then in there I would write a short reflection so you can say something like this year I decided to learn how to play soccer it felt like I was a child again I made some new friends and it was really fun Okay, short, short reflection, not an essay, short reflection, few words. And then I want to maybe put that underneath that image so that my lecturer knows that that is the label that I'm using. And then you want to format it. You can change the color, even the, the background color of that image. You can change the size. Students have asked, do we have to, I mean, the font, 
Do we have to use a specific font? No, you don't. Okay, so there's my first image, and then I can even remove the, the outline. Okay, so there we go, first image done. Then I go back to my questions again, and then I say, okay, and remember you can you can have more than one activity that's important to you. So if you also like to cook, let's see. So you also, in your spare time, really enjoy cooking um, or learning how to cook new things. That's great. Again, you can take pictures of yourself actually cooking or you in your kitchen cooking or even the foods that you've cooked. Um, and then give it a label. Or if you don't want to do that, you can also find images on um, Pixabay. So my, my daughter and I, a couple of weeks ago, learned, uh, made our pizza, our own pizza for the first time. She really enjoyed that. So if you've done something for the first time, show us what you've done. Um, that's really a skill that you learn. Um, and that's what we want to see. Okay, so I'm just trying to look for an image. Um, again, it can be anything. Let's just take this one for the purposes of today. Remember again where I get my reference for that image. Um, okay, from here. So the image is by pixels. So I'm going to copy that quickly before I forget. That's my number two image. I go back, copy the link, control V to paste it. Then I can go back and download or copy that image. Okay, and then you decide where on your poster you want to put it. Just uh, with Microsoft Word, it's not always, you know, user friendly in terms of putting images like I can't just now move this image to exactly where I want it to be it sometimes just goes where it goes so you have to just play around a bit but don't be frustrated by that it's always nice to just learn something new by just playing around okay so you can say um, I also really love to cook on the weekends this activity is um, a stress reliever for me and I enjoy making different meals. Okay, um, try to be authentic in the reflection. So something, something that you've actually taken time to write will, will really give you good marks. Okay, and then again, I can change my font, make sure that it's visible, just be careful of using background colors that are not clear, okay? Um, I'm just going to change the font, right? Something like that. Okay, and again, this is just, I'm doing quick examples here. It doesn't have to look like this at all. Okay, so do you get the idea? You start to then fill up your page with pictures and everything, and there must be some variety. So please don't make these images so big that there's now no more space to put anything else. They must be um, uh, small enough that you can reflect on other things. And remember, it doesn't only have to be pictures. So let's say there's a poem that you really love to read or to recite to yourself because it motivates you it encourages you to keep going you can go and find that poem um, I can't think of anyone offhand so I'm just gonna google like strength poem um, and you can find lovely poems that um, just have a few lines uh, what's this? Sometimes I revisit the rubble of weakness to rebuild a home in strength. That's lovely. Okay, just for the purposes of today, I'm just going to copy this um, and put that somewhere. Make it smaller. Not that small. <laughs> and then, of course, you can even rewrite it. Um, I think maybe to crop it. And don't just delete the reference. So at least this one is telling you it was by Jody Lynn. Crop it. Okay, it's going on to a second page. There we go, something like that. Now remember to reference. So I'm just going to quickly write you a poem by Jody Lynn. 
um, and where did I get it so I want to copy that web address so you need to actually go to the website um, okay I see it's a Pinterest um, you might have to then click somewhere to access the, the actual source the original source better I'm just trying to do this very quickly okay so do you see how you build it up like this um, if you are going to use your computer you you're limited in terms of you know you can't now put materials um, I was saying like let's say your mom or, or your friend gave you a teddy bear to comfort you when you go to university you're going to be far from home um, you can't now put that image or put that actual teddy bear on your poster but if you were doing a hard copy you would be able to so you are limited a little bit in terms of uh, working on a computer but um, be creative and think about how you can do it okay so now um, I hope I hope this gives you an idea of how you would fill it up be be uh, have a lot of variety try to answer as many of those questions that we've given you here as you can um, try to think about them really quite deeply for a couple of hours so that when you do your poster it's not just picture word picture word picture word you've you've tried to reflect a little bit of metaphors you know and you've done a, a really thorough job now we want to get to our reference list so you see how we've saved the images that we've gotten so far but we want to try to reference according to the APA format so I'm going to click on that link that was in the instructions that I gave you to show you how you can reference images so this is the format that APA suggests that you put the last name of the author of that image initials the year not the year that you got it the year that they created the image and sometimes you might not be able to find that information the image title the site name or the location and then the URL which is the web address okay so you can just copy this and they've even given you an example here okay um, so I'm going to just copy this one first go back to my reference list Okay, just pasting it so that I can see how it should be done now this image was by love my bri and look don't stress about now trying to find who is love my bri what's his first name what's his second name um, I'm just happy honestly if you just make an effort at this point if there's no date you can actually say ND or ND like that um, just double check again what's the right format the image title um, okay didn't have did it have a title that's something else that maybe you'll need to go back and just double check let me just say I think it was called teams eh? um, or team soccer team let's just say don't make it up try and find the original soccer team um, dot the site name was pixabay and then dot the URL is this so you just copy this This doesn't look very neat but don't stress about it um, yeah I think that's fine okay so do you see how you do it like that if you have an image you reference images in certain ways if you have pictures from magazines you reference in certain ways if you are re you've referred to some text from a journal from a textbook you reference it in a certain way so you must just go back to this website and then um, see how you can reference different things so for example um, a book you would click on a book and it'll give you an idea of how you reference according to a book okay um, if you're using a web page there's differences for a web page journals newspapers etc okay so please don't be stressed about the referencing for this assignment the idea was to introduce you to ways of referencing it is very important and some of your lecturers may already be expecting you to do it but we are not going to be too strict on it but we want you to just understand that it's important if you are taking images words that are not your own um, and putting them on your poster okay so um, I'm done now F for the purposes of this video I save my poster somewhere on my desktop probably is the safest place and then I call it my life skills poster I'm going to change the date to 3 July save it as a word document that's fine those of you that want to save it as a PDF you would go file 
save as and then here where it says save as type I would just change it from Word to PDF okay and then save it's going to open up for me and that's what it looks like on a PDF so the reason I was saying it's preferable you use PDF is because you see I can't remove images or whatever sometimes if I'm if if my lecturer opens this and by mistake oh she clicks somewhere <gasps> she's deleted it and then she doesn't realize that it wasn't supposed to be like this so that's why I'm saying it's just safer for everybody if it's like this um, so that it's not editable and then your second page is your reference list so this is still one document even though it's two pages you don't have to put your username you don't have to put your student information because remember you are uploading this onto Brightspace and you don't need a cover page you don't even need a title but look the more you make it professional and look good and 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 really structure it well the more marks you will get so I'm not saying you have to have a title but it would be lovely if you reflected on some nice title that you could call this um, we've said it's your first year experience poster so you can even call it that my first year experience or you can say um, uh, the roller coaster that has been my life so far you know just something interesting that describes and captures um, what all of this reflects for you okay and then uh, let me see how many minutes okay this has been a quite a long video so I'm not going to sh share again how to upload it but remember you go to my tutor uh, sorry so you go back to Brightspace click on the instructions link scroll all the way down add the file you would now look for it where you saved it on your computer on your desktop my life skills poster 3 July add it's there but it's not yet submitted because I have submitted a previous file it's asking me to overwrite so I say yes I want to overwrite and then it's saying file submission successful I want to double check that I actually submitted the right one it will download to the bottom of my screen I click open and yay that's my poster okay so that's how you would do it I hope that that helps you guys gives you an idea um, I wanted to also show you if you did want to do it on PowerPoint you could um, I just need to open up a new page so what you could do on PowerPoint is go to your um, you know get your your information your pictures um, you could then paste them in your different slides I, I actually would like to use PowerPoint because it's much more easier to manipulate images and things like that um, than Word so you could even have one picture per slide uh, then your next slide would be I'm just gonna copy the soccer picture and then you can even write a short reflection here about that about why you chose that image then your cooking picture write a short reflection and then um, okay yeah that is that's it and then what you do is you say file save as again wherever you want to save it on your desktop uh, my life skills poster and then change this the type to either a JPEG which is an image or a PNG portable network graphics format those are image types so I would change it to PNG and then say save it's going to ask me do I want to save all the slides or just that current one say all the slides and then it's going to create a folder for you on the desktop so if I go now to my desktop there is my folder and there are all my slides as pictures which is nice you see that's quite nice and then what you can do is you can um, you can actually copy those pictures and do do it again on Word but it's just it would include your reflections so let me just go to the second one 
So it's, it's, it's similar. You're pretty much doing the same thing, but in this case, it's just already got your nice reflections together and it saved it as an image. But what you cannot do is submit this PowerPoint document because now you've got one, two, three, four, five, however many slides, and that is not a poster. Okay, it would still need to be in the format of a poster. Okay, guys, so I hope that helps you. Uh, sorry, I didn't want to make this video too long, but <laughs> I did want to guide you. I hope I've answered all of the questions that you've had about doing this. Um, remember, just have fun with it. Do it the way that you like um, and be creative. Okay, so all the best and um, please enjoy the video and um, yeah, let me know if it was helpful. And if there's anything else you need, please contact me or any of your primary lecturers. Okay, take care guys, bye.